We have a new earthquake swarm northwest of the Yellowstone caldera, Yellowstone Lake, in Helena, Montana. I've counted over 10 just today. And the biggest one up to now being at a 3.1 magnitude. And uh, this is an ongoing swarm. It's been going on for weeks. And let's just take a look at the activity. This is the area where we've had our earthquake swarm yet again today. It's been going on for weeks right around this area. Let's take a look at Seismo Berkeley. As you can see the close-up, the blue is today and the yellow is uh, the past week. This is it. And let's just pan out a little bit and you can see they'll fall right on top of each other. This is the biggest one here of the 3.1. And the other ones were just about the same time, around uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, right around there. And uh, about uh, 6 to 7 kilometers depth. This one is uh, a little bit shallower. Okay, this one was a little bit later at 7.50, about 10 to 8 in the afternoon. But you can see that they're all on top of each other. and. They're northwest of Yellowstone. This basically is the area of Yellowstone supervolcano, which is right there. That's the lake right there. Let's pan in so you can see it for yourself. The corner of Wyoming is where we have the lake. This is Yellowstone Lake, and right under there is the magma. The roof of the magma chamber is right under the lake. Pan out again, you can see that this is all, this is mountain range, the Rocky Mountains. Of course, this is on fault lines that uh, go vertically all the way down, as you can see, making this arc all the way down this way. And this thing here, right here, is the area of the Long Valley Caldera, which is another super volcano. And as we know, this is a subduction zone. If you see the videos previous to this one, you see that the Earth's crust has been, uh, the tectonic plates have been shoved, the Pacific plate has been shoved underneath the North American plate. And this is basically the subduction zone, all of this, the Rocky Mountains, of which uh, Yellowstone supervolcano is a part of. Rocky Mountains, as you can see, Rocky Mountains, part of the subduction zone. And yes, Yellowstone is a part of that subduction zone. Now going out, we can go to the map again to see where we've had our 3.1 today and the swarm. And uh, this is where we had the 5.0 that was downgraded to a 4.4. and. Uh, since that day, uh, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory has not made any mention of it whatsoever. This again is our Yellowstone caldera, the lake, with the magma chamber underneath. And you'll recall that the geologists even explained to us that even the waves on the lake can cause earthquakes in the area. Just the wave motion of the lakes, of the lake. That's uh, astonishing. Okay, this area from here to the lake is about 100 miles from what I measured. Let's do it again together. There you go, it's about 100 miles, as you can see, from that area. It's just about, it's a less, lot less from the uh, area that they had the 5 downgraded to 4.4. By the way, they have not explained what that was. They have no mention of that in the Caldera Chronicles that come out every week. They have no mention of that since that happened. Uh, that did happen previously, about 35 years ago, and they were all excited and flabbergasted and astonished and, uh, that because they considered it a major quake for the area. This time they didn't even touch that topic. Uh, I guess it was from lack of knowing what to say. But here we are, we're continuing the quake swarms here. 
size more Berkeley as we can see that was a big one today 3.1 uh, as always, California, the West, especially the South, is really rocking. And we've had the uh, areas of, okay, the Mississippi as well is rocking. Now, I don't know if that's a mine. I didn't see if that what kind of a quake that was. Let's see if that one is. That's Oklahoma, that must be fracking again. Usually they are. And, and this one is Tennessee. Okay. Going back, this is the area that we have a lot of earthquakes recently. Of course, it has to do with Yellowstone. It also doesn't stop in Wyoming. It's all of this area here, which has been quite active lately. Let's go back to our size of Berkeley. And as you can see for yourself, OK, sorry, I pulled out too fast. This is the whole area. This is the end of Wyoming, and this is the whole area of Yellowstone, even going down to southwest Utah. Now, Montana, as we know, that area that is uh, very active lately is a volcanic area. The Elkhorn Mountains are called Elkhorn because they have tremendous herds of elk. Mountain range, southwest Montana, part of the Rocky Mountains, are roughly 300,000 acres in size. It is an inactive volcanic mountain range, with the highest point being Crow Peak at 9,414 feet. And then you have right next to it the Elkhorn Peak, which is 9,381 feet, surrounded by cities of Helena, Montana, and Boulder, part of the Helena National Forest. And uh, they were formed about 74 to 81 years ago, late Cretaceous, time when the Phaleron tectonic plate subducted beneath Western North America. The Phaleron was, of course, Pacific Ocean, Pacific Ocean plate subducting beneath the North American plate, allowing magma to rise to the surface. Elkhorn Mountains volcanics are extrusive rocks related to the plutonic granites and the boulder batholith, volcanic flows, lahars, and ash falls from sources of the Elkhorn Mountains reach as far as Montana, Corstow, Montana, but the thickest deposit lie with a radius of 60 mi miles from Elkhorn. The volcanics probably originated covering an area of about 10,000 square miles and mineral deposits associated with Elkhorn. Volcanics include those mined at Elkhorn, Montana, now a ghost town and even gold, of course, at Golden Sunlight Mine near White Hollow Mountain Range, seen today related to regional structural uplift dating mostly to Oligocene time. And there it is right there, basically. And uh, as we see, it is, yes, volcanic. Um, and of course, all these volcanoes are on fault lines. And the rivers usually are in the faults. So that's where our activity is continuing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. 
Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.